The GI map now includes enhanced reporting and visual cues to improve clinical utility. We've also updated reference ranges and added some additional markers to complete the picture of your patient's gut health. So let's go page by page and highlight the updates. Let's start with page one. While the pathogenic targets remain the same, we've added color to the result bar for easier readability. Now, detected low levels that fall below reference range are flagged in yellow to call your attention to the clinical relevance of low-level gut pathogens. The values to the right of the page are now reported reference instead of normal. This terminology change denotes lab-determined cutoff values correlated with disease. And a key is now provided at the bottom of the page to describe exponential reporting and to define less than DL, which means below detection limit. Now let's discuss page two. The GI map remains tried and true for its sensitivity in finding and reporting H. pylori. This section has not changed. You will still see the result flag red above our lab reference of 1.0 E3 or 1,000 microorganisms per gram, and virulence factors will still be reported if the patient's quantitative value is above 500 or 5.0 E2. For more information on virulence factors, please see our updated reference chart for these genetics, included on page 16 of our modernized GI map interpretive guide. You will notice the next section looks a little different. The section header has been changed from normal flora to commensal keystone bacteria to more accurately reflect the nomenclature and classification of these organisms. Visual cues have been added to this section to quickly help you identify low normal or high normal levels of these bacteria. And you will now see levels below lab reference range and less than detectable levels flagged in red where they were previously flagged yellow or black respectively. The reference range for Acromantia mucinophilia has been updated to reflect lab analysis and internal review. And finally, the bacterial class Clostridia has been replaced with Roseberia species to offer a more comprehensive picture of butyrate and short chain fatty acid production by these commensal organisms. Now let's take a look at page three. Page three, as always, highlights opportunistic organisms that can overgrow in dysbiosis. Using this page, we can get very granular with dysbiosis patterns and individualized recommendations. Nothing has changed in that regard, but the page has been reorganized and updated. First, we have recategorized the subheaders for opportunistic microbes. This is to highlight that there are certain commensal microbes that are expected to be detected on each report. These organisms can be problematic when they are elevated above reference range, but keep in mind that the goal for page three is not necessarily to have all organisms below detection limit. Also, Enterobacter species and Escherichia species now appear on this page in addition to page two to highlight their pathobiont nature and their propensity to drive inflammation. Based on lab analysis, reference range changes have been applied to both Bacillus and the Methanobacteriaceae family of microbes. And finally, Desulfo vibrio species has been added to the GI map. Quantifying levels of this sulfate-reducing organism gives deeper insight into gas production through the microbiome, particularly hydrogen sulfide, which can reduce oxidative stress at low levels, but pose toxicity at high concentrations. There have been no changes to the fungi and yeast or cytolomegalovirus and Epstein-Barr virus reported on page three. Now moving on to page four. Little changes have been made to the non-pathogenic parasites, protozoa and worms, found on page four, but you will now see detected levels that are below reference range flagged yellow as opposed to black 
to highlight the potential clinical relevance of low levels of these microorganisms. Moving into the intestinal health markers. As with page two, we've added visual cues to each analyte in this section with the intention to simplify and accelerate readability. This graphical reporting draws attention to subclinical levels that still fall within reference range or functional ranges for each of these chemistries. Reference range changes have been applied to both anti-gliadin and zonulin add-on after lab analysis and internal review. And lastly, eosinophil activation protein has been added to the GI map. This protein plays a significant role in a variety of inflammatory and mast cell mediated pathologies for which associated patterns are strongly emerging both in literature as well as our GI map consultations. And finally, on page five, there are no significant changes to this part of the test, but you will experience new formatting for the H. pylori specific antibiotic resistant genes. Thank you for watching this quick video walkthrough. We are confident you will find these enhancements helpful in your interpretation of the GI map and for optimizing your patient outcomes.